My name's Paul Horn. This is Jessica Page. We're from a small company called IPM Technologies based just out of Melbourne. And um, we're here to talk about controlling pests using integrated pest management. Biological control usually to us is predators or parasites. So they're insects that eat other insects or mites that eat other mites. Uh, we abbreviate that to beneficial species. And of course, there's a range of other beneficial species like bees and pollinators. Uh, but we're talking beneficials in terms of predators and parasites, so the things that actually eat the pests. So in most of the systems that we're talking about, especially in broadacre, the beneficial species, both predators and parasites, are naturally occurring. And so a lot of the predators are native species. There's different species of the same groups in different areas, but things like predatory beetles, carabid beetles, you'd get different sorts of carabids in every area. And they're often resident in the paddock that the farmer is interested in. Then there's a range of other beneficials which we refer to as transient. So they're things like lacewings, ladybirds, hoverflies, which move through the landscape and follow populations of the pest. And they move from one food source to another as the seasons progress. How many beneficials do we need is a difficult yeah. to answer because we don't usually like using rigid thresholds, such as are available for certain pests. So thresholds work well where there's a pesticide-based approach to controlling pests, and that means with a certain number of pests, you get a certain level of damage, and so thresholds work well there. But when we have beneficial species in, added into the equation, then it's much more complex. For example, if we had 10 aphids on a plant, is that a problem? With no beneficials, it could be a problem very quickly as they multiply rapidly. But with 10 aphids and maybe one ladybird and one hoverfly and one lacewing, there would be no problem whatsoever. So we tend to look at trends rather than rigid thresholds. So once the broad spectrum insecticides are looked at and taken out where possible, it suggests not starting with the most vulnerable crop, which is usually something like canola. So if you look at establishing and building up populations of beneficial species in the cereal phase, which can tolerate a little bit more damage perhaps at the start, if a typical rotation maybe was two cereals and then canola, start with the cereals and leave the canola for the third year. 